Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking out this video. It's your girl LB. Welcome to my channel, Watch With Me LB, where I give you fun, fresh, and funny rants, reviews, and recaps on my favorite movies and TV shows. We're here to talk about The Idol Episode 3, May Peace Be With Me, and you, okay? You know what? We're not even gonna do no formal introduction. We're not gonna talk about all the things. We're just gonna go ahead and hop right on into it because guess what? Today is Tuesday. I was gonna do this recap on Monday, but Monday was Juneteenth, and guess what? Not on Juneteenth, uh-uh. I was not about to stress myself out on Juneteenth, okay? That was a day of community. That was a day of family. That was a day of remembrance, and my nerves wasn't about to get riled up, and my pressure wasn't gonna go straight to heaven. So I said, you know what? We're gonna do that on a Tuesday, baby. There was a point in this episode where I thought we were just in a fever dream, the first two episodes, and that we were gonna get a show from this point forward and no we weren't they went right on back to to titties and bad acting so let's go ahead and talk about um episode three of the idol so i can go ahead and, and just get it over with i gotta rip the band-aid off so the episode opens up and we see jocelyn asleep in the bed and she doesn't have a shirt on immediately i knew that i was gonna be seeing her mammary glands i knew it and just as soon as i said maybe she could just pull the covers up you know what i'm saying you know how they do in the movies they get snuggled up under the covers maybe she could just do that because we don't need to see her areola to understand what's going on in the scene but then i thought to myself maybe her titties have their own management team with them and the management team for the titties was fighting to be included. The management team for the titties was like, you know what? Lily Rose is in this show and this show is gonna be big for her. We as a set of titties, we need our kickback too. You need to slide us on in there, even if it don't make no sense. And we gonna, you know what I'm saying? Maybe the titties is a part of a union. Maybe they got like a, a union of, you know, titties. I don't know. I don't know folks, but I'm telling you, we not even 30 seconds into the episode. I got a nipple in my cornea move on let's move on yo. anyway so tedros wakes jocelyn up and says good morning angel get up let's go shopping y'all gotta charge it like are y'all how y'all paying for that because hi i'm jocelyn's manager say last episode babe i've been paying your rent so unless y'all trying to go to like the Shein pop-up shop where you could get you a whole outfit for 7.99 I'm trying to figure out where y'all going. And we know Tedros don't have no money because he look like he don't have no money because he got his do-rag on tied tight. And I'm like, baby, for what? For what? What you got a do-rag on, my love? Why you got that on? Because it ain't serving no purpose. Your hair is dry, dyed, and laid to the side, baby. It look like a horse will roll up on it and take a wonderful nibble from your scalp. You ain't do... Relax. I'm gonna relax. <laughs> Jocelyn and Tedros have pulled Leah... Leah, Leah, the assistant, driving them around in Morticia Adams' Oldsmobile, okay, around LA. And Tedros got on a members-only jacket that I know for a fact smell like mall balls. Tedros, I know, smells like a old mildew beach towel. I know for a fact that Tedros smells like the rest stop on a state line between Louisiana and Texas. I know these things. I don't understand I don't understand. I don't understand. It's a period on the end of that. It, that's a full statement. I don't understand. So while while on the way to wherever they were going, Trafalgar decides to go down on Jocelyn, which I'm like, okay, you know, y'all grown, do what you want to do, do what you want to do. But if I'm the assistant, if I'm Leah or Leah, we not that cool, baby. I'm not your mobile bedroom like you're not gonna do that in my prayer like that's disrespectful AF. first of all hire a driver baby i'm your assistant i'm supposed to assist you with the daily activities of your life i'm not here to drive you around while you get your munch eight in the back of the thing by man i'm sure he got gingivitis all right i'm sure that trafalgar got some kind of dental or gum disease not talking about the weekend all right i'm not talking about the weekend i'm talking about trafalgar trafalgar got some sort of gum disease gingivitis halitosis i know he don't clean his tongue and she let him go down on her do what you want to do Josh. all right that's your coin purse you do what you want to do but if i'm the assistant absolutely not because then you're gonna be like hey um can you call and make me an appointment at the clinic because for some reason i'm having some ph balance issues 
On behalf of your PH, Jocelyn, don't do that. Don't do that. They're driving down Rodale Drive and they're passing all the stores. They're passing Gucci, they're passing Louis, and there is nobody in front of any of those stores. And then there's a crowd of people in front of the Valentino store. And then Trafalgar's like, pull over in front of Valentino. And I'm like, you set that up. So this is the first time we're actually seeing how people respond to her because I'm like, don't nobody know Jocelyn at this point because they keep calling her idol they keep saying she popular but i'm like where is the proof so she goes into the valentino store and then trafalgar must have ass come right behind her chewing on a matchstick looking stupid okay when well, she's trying things on and once again i'm thinking who foot in the bill so i'm thinking okay well we're going into the valentino store we're gonna get like a little pretty woman try on montage right it's gonna be cute it's gonna be you know what i'm saying right because i'm thinking this is the first time that we're actually seeing them together in public outside of this weird ass dynamic that he always got her in. I was mistaken because that wasn't what this was. This part aggravated all the marrow out of my bone. Trafalgar is very controlling and there are two salespeople that are helping Jocelyn spend this money that she don't have. Trafalgar seems to be getting very upset at the male attendant when he's giving her advice. This is not the first time where I realized that Jocelyn can't be left to her own devices and she really needs a mentor, a big sister, somebody to step in on her behalf. Because if you sitting up in my grown face and you gonna tell me that a man with a relaxed brat tail braided in the back that's chewing on a matchstick that got an old musty ass members only jacket, shiny slacks and loafers, in the Valentino store is gonna tell me what to wear and pick out my clothes for me, I'm thinking, has she suffered a concussion of some sort? Is she some sort of patient that escaped like a, a mental health facility and then worked her way up to stardom? Is that what we about to find out? Because it ain't no way somebody with good common sense will look at Trafalgar and be like, you know what? Jocelyn crazy too. Now y'all, this has to be some of the worst, I don't, it had to have been an ad lib. That's, that's the thing I'ma land on because no professional writer worked their soul that would ever be hired on a HBO, I mean, excuse me, not HBO, on a Max. No, this was HBO. I don't know what it was. Whoever they got to write this show would not have written what he said that just enraged me because it was just that bad. And you tell me if I'm tripping, cause maybe it's me. Let me catch you looking at her again. I'm not. Let me catch you looking at her again. I'm sorry, Let me I'm not. Fucking sure. catch you looking at her again. I'll fucking drag you down Rodeo while your fucking ass was fucking stomp you. I'll fucking curb stomp you. I'm sorry. I'll fucking curb stomp you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not sure what you were interpreting, but let me see I wasn't it. Doing anything. Let me see it. Quit playing in my face. I will drag you down Rodeo by your ass. <laughs> Think about the logistics behind that. It's like, who says that? I. And then he was like, I'm gonna fucking curb stomp you. He looked like a deranged rabbit, like a rabid rabbit. Poor Leah, the assistant, is for some reason she's scared of him. And then the guy in Valentino, he ain't said nothing to him because I'm sure he was probably just trying to keep his job. But I'm just not understanding from the outside looking in how anybody could be scared of anybody in a members only jacket. What you could do is take Trafalgar by that raggedy ponytail and just spin his ass and fling him across wherever you need to fling him to. I just, it just was really upsetting to be like, okay, maybe that was supposed to be funny. Maybe it was supposed to be like a joke. It just didn't, it just was terrible. It really, really was. It was bad and I'm gonna stop talking about it. I wanna separate the art from the artist. Hopefully, hopefully this is not how the weekend really talks, right? Because if you equate his songs slash lyrics to the way that he sings them, to the way that he talks and says things in this show, it's the same, it's the same energy. It's the same energy. Jocelyn goes in and she tries on this red little dress or whatever. And she comes out and she shows Trafalgar. And Trafalgar is like, oh my fucking God. I just, oh, you look so fucking hot. I just want to rip this off of you. And I'm like, who are you, sir? Is it me? Am I tripping? Because it was really aggravating. He was like biting his, he was like, oh girl, I'm just going to rip that fucking right off. Really didn't like it. And Jocelyn was just giggling down. And I was like, 
why would you be attracted to somebody that does that? I just, cause he's giving me like crust. You know what I'm saying? He's giving me like scab. He's giving me like, you know what I'm saying? Bass of tracing. Me like mold and mildew. And I just, I don't think, I don't even understand why the people in Valentino wasn't like, sir, can we help you? Why they didn't discriminate against him? Why they just let him in the store? But it's like, if you pick up anything in the Valentino store, Trafalgar gonna leave oily fingerprints on it. And I I just wouldn't want that for my establishment. So they ain't asking him nothing, child. And I was confused about it, but go off. Leah is calling Haim and Destiny. Haim and Destiny roll up to the house and it's like, well, what's going on? And y'all gotta help me because He's taking over the house and he's like controlling everything. And then Haim was like, get the blicky. Okay, Destiny got the little blicky out the glove compartment, pulled it, made sure it had a little, you know what I'm saying? A little pew pew in it. The way that Leah was describing it. First of all, she wasn't doing a good job of explaining what was going on. She, she wasn't able to use her words in a way that really signified the magnitude of what was going on. She was trying, bless her heart, but she like a bird in flight, child. She just... She ain't, she ain't got it all there. And so she's like, he's taking over the house mentally. And then Haim was like, bitch, I got shit to do. I don't have time to be dealing with you. What you talking about? She was talking about how, you know, she fought the Tedros fired Andres, the fine ass chef, which I would say about that part, child, cause he could show enough come work for me, child. I had to take out some kind of loan or do like a home equity line of credit or something to get him on my payroll. So we get a flash forward to that morning before they left to go shopping, right? And so it's Trafalgar and his stupid ass do-rag. And it was making me mad because the do-rag was mad fluffy at the top. Like, what was it on for? Is it spo it's supposed to be laying things flat? It's supposed to be keeping things in place, but it's like mad fluffy right now. So it's like the weekend had his actual hair under there and not that stupid ass wig ponytail part and it was really upsetting me but okay so I was like well when Mike Dean Kanye's producer gets here where should he set up and then Leah was like well I'll ask Jocelyn and then Trafalgar was like well I'm running the show I don't know if you understand that and then she was like well I still gotta talk to Jocelyn to see where she wanna put him and then he leaned over to her and he was like are you fucking R word and I'm like no, bitch, are you? The word that signifies uh, somebody with mental health issues or mental um, disabilities, that is the R word that you don't you don't utter that word because it's terrible, right? I could definitely um, speak on her behalf and let him know directly where to put his motherfucking question. He is trying to assert his dominance over her house. So Jocelyn comes downstairs and she's talking to Andres, the chef. And she's like, you know, the probiotics you gave me are working great. And so she shows him her stomach and he starts like touching her stomach. He's like, oh my God, you look great. And Tedros is like, do you mind not groping my girl? And he's like, oh no, it's fine. You know, my family is doctors. And I was like, that was a dumbass response, but okay. So he's standing next to Andres and then he just hauls off and slaps the shit out of Andres across his face. Andres doesn't do anything. And then, which I was like, where is his response to that? I don't know nobody like that. He fires Andres, right? The chef. And then Andres is like, I don't take orders from you. I take orders from Jocelyn. And then Jocelyn gives him a HR response. I'm sorry, Andres. It's not working out. I appreciate your time. Best of luck to your future endeavors. She basically allowed him to abuse her staff. And I'm confused why. Because if you line up Trafalgar and Andres the chef and ask me to pick one, do you think I'm picking Trafalgar? I'm sure Andres the chef can blow your back out just as well, if not better than Trafalgar. And you want your pH will be fine after the experience. This world is a cold, cold place. Let Trafalgar and his fucking taco meat slap him across the face, and then you fire him. Mm. I don't, I don't know if I mentioned, but we're flop, we're flip flopping back and forth between this morning before they got to the Valentino store and at the Valentino store. Jocelyn is asking Trafalgar why he likes picking out clothes so much, and then Trafalgar says out his greasy ass mouth that he thinks that she just needs more taste. And Jocelyn was like, wait, what? And he was like, yeah, you just, you know, need a little taste. And she was like, you don't think I have taste? And he was like, mm, not really. I don't know what, maybe he, I don't know. Because the next thing you know, they were in the bathroom having sex, right? And 
it was so bad because the noises that she was making, it was like they took the sound from an adult film and just laid it over top of what they were doing. Cause it was like, first of all, y'all in the Valentino store, y'all ain't got no goddamn home training. If I ever thought that I was about to go drop two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars on a garment, bag, shoes, glasses, accessories, scarf that anybody had fornicated near, baby, you will have a time on your hands dealing with me. He tries to finish inside of her and she, thank God, pulls away. And he's like, well, what, what, what am I supposed to do now? And so she's like, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. And she literally leaves the dressing room Ain't no clean up, ain't no wash up, ain't no let me go to the bathroom right quick. pH balance is on 900 and sits down on a chair, drink champagne and just waits for him to finish doing what he doing. And then he finishes in the bath, in the dressing room, loud, making all kind of noise and then wipes his hand that he fin, you know, he got the juices and berries in his hand and wipes it on the, baby, let me tell you something. That is some trifling ass Shit, J Jocelyn trifling too, all right? She ain't no better. Girl, that thing made me so mad. It ain't no girls in here, but that thing made me mad. They get back to the house and Haim and Destiny are still there waiting on Jocelyn and that trifling ass dude that she with to come back to the house. And Haim and Destiny are being so nice. Tell me about yourself, where you from? And then, you know, Tedros is like, yeah, I'm from here, from Hollywood. And then Destiny was like, shit, for real, I'm from, I'm from Hollywood too. What high school you went to? That's the next, that's always the next question. You from this place, what school you went to? And then Tedros was like, um, well, I wasn't a good student, I got put out. And Destiny was like, shit, for real, I got put out of school too. And then, you know, Jocelyn kind of jumps in and is like, you trying to make him feel bad for getting put out of school. And I'm like, bitch, shut up. I don't understand why she didn't want to know the answer to that question. Cause she don't even know his last name. They leaving out the house and they both kind of pass over Leah and was like, yeah, I really like this dude. And I'm like, I know this a lie. When you're a teenager, if your mama don't want you to do something, you be itching to do that shit even more. Destiny already referred to herself and Haim as Jocelyn's parents. Destiny know what time it is, so does Haim. If they say you don't need to be around this person, she's gonna wanna be around him even more. And they get to the car and they like, I, I girl in trouble. We, we we gotta figure it out. Hopefully they murder his ass. I ain't even gonna hold you. So while Trafalgar got her ass gassed up around looking stupid, she ain't sing a song, make a beat, snap her fingers, do nothing. Whole time, Diane, her ex-dancer, and Nikki, the record exec, done replaced Jocelyn in her own ass music video. And in the same outfit with the same choreography, the same song, and Diane filming the video. And Diane is killing it, right? Once again, Tedros is inserting his dirty ass self where he doesn't belong and he's talking to Jocelyn's creative director and he goes up to him and he's like, yeah, hey, I don't like none of your creative direction. I think everything you're doing is trash. And then the creative director was like, yeah, I agree. These two men are discussing the fact that they both think that they should use the picture of Jocelyn's that was leaked to Twitter and to the public as her album cover. So it's later that night and Jocelyn is in the studio with Isaac, the one that got the blind eyebrow and Chloe and that other dude with the tattoos and stuff. And basically it's like an indoctrination session, right? To the, to the cult because they talking about how Tedros taught them about how, you know, you can never say no. And that when you say no, you deny yourself an experience that's gonna make you better. It's just bullshit, right? Basically what they were trying to say to her is that you have to say yes to these experiences, even if they are not good for you, if they harm you, if they cause you pain, because they make you better and they make your art better. You have to hurt in order to get something good from it. You have to push through the pain. You have to experience these horrible things to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Bullshit, 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 right? They all tell Jocelyn that they can't say no to Tedros. And if they do, they're going to be in big trouble. Then later than that, they're all at dinner and Jocelyn makes this really nice speech about how she, you know, bought the house with her mama and, you know, just, you know, bullshit. I don't know. To Talking about how they were all family. And I was like, tell me that, tell me the dude on the end, him down there, tell me what his middle name is. Shut your ass up then, Jocelyn. Because that's not your family. God damn it. Oh, <sighs> girl, it just... I just be want to protect people, yeah. I, I swear I do because I know that that happens so many times where people just glob on. And then Trafalgar ass was sitting at the head of the table. 
Like he they daddy. Like he get the big piece of chicken at dinner. Ugh. So then Trafalgar kind of pressures the creative director into kind of dropping the, the, the cookie that they think that they should use the picture with the essence of life on her face as the album cover. And Jocelyn kind of like, yeah, well, shit. I mean, that'll be, you know, a good way for me to take back the narrative and whatever, whatever. And so then Trafalgar gets increasingly more fucked up and increasingly more messy and just trying to make them genuinely feel like what they think or feel isn't right. Jocelyn is basically saying like, well, I'm gonna think about it. I also want to have a career where I'm taken seriously. I don't want to be known as the girl with jizz on her face the whole my whole career. And he's basically like, well, why not? Like, who gives a fuck if they take you serious? And then Jocelyn is like, first of all, I know what the fuck I'm talking about. I've been doing this for a decade. And then Trafalgar's like, well, don't be rude. And then Jocelyn was like, I'm not being rude. I'm just calling the thing a thing. I had hope that at this point, Jocelyn would start speaking up for herself and saying what she wants and being assertive because all of the balls are in her court and it's literally her court and not allow him to control her narrative, the narrative, the conversation was getting really interesting, right? It was getting intriguing. I was like, hell yeah. But um, no. So they still coming at her and Tedros is being real rude and disrespectful. And he's like, well, when the last time you wrote a song? And then Jocelyn was like, I wrote this song. And then he was like, well, was that like a year ago? You ain't did nothing since? Like basically trying to like call in a question her ability to make music, right? And like saying that she's stuck, right? And so they start to get into this conversation. And then first of all, I ain't like how he dismissed Leah. He was like, Isaac, Leah looks tired. You should take her to bed, bitch. First of all, long story short, he basically peer pressures her into talking about what she went through with her mother. Jocelyn finally breaks and tells the entire table that her mother used to abuse her with a hairbrush to the point where she would break skin and she would bleed from the hairbrush, right? That kind of morphed into this twisted form of motivation for her. And then since her mother has been passed, nobody's there to motivate her in that way. Trafalgar tells Jocelyn to go get the hairbrush. And Jocelyn goes to get the hairbrush. And of course, there's a song by The Weeknd playing in the background. And child, I just don't want to hear him sing not another note. I'm never going to be able to not see that goddamn ponytail when I hear his songs. Anyway, now I'm thinking, okay, he's going to help her to overcome that, right? We don't need this symbol of abuse and power in your presence anymore, but fuck, I thought it was gonna be like a come to Jesus full circle kind of situation, right? So she finds him like on like this patio kind of thing in front of the, like this fireplace. And I'm like, all right, bet he gonna throw the, the hairbrush in the fireplace. Child, that's too much like right. He has now replaced her mother in that motivational abuse cycle right there's a lot of back and forth like they they jump time between that night when she got the hairbrush and then the following morning i don't know if he hit her with it or if he inserted the hairbrush in her because she was on all fours and she was in front of everybody too but he did it and we see her we don't hear it but we see her crying and yelping in pain and then that next morning she's in the tub with him mammary glands out why though so we just saw her being abused and now we see her being objectified yet again she thanks him for taking care of her she looked fucking rat just tore down rolled over okay just tied and just broken and that's pretty much where the episode ends thank god there was so much unnecessary yeah, just so much unnecessary in this episode. The acting was bad, the writing was bad, the um, experience that I experienced was bad. I'm gonna give this a negative 47 out of 10. How many episodes they got in this season, Jesus? I don't know, man. And I just don't wanna be aggravated. I wanna have a good time. That's what I started this channel for, to have a good time and talk about good stuff. And things just been letting me down. This is just letting me down. Every time I close my eyes, I see the weekend ponytail. I will drag you down the street by your ass. Let me get up, <laughs> let me get up off here. Y'all tell me what y'all thought about this thing in the comments. Check on your girl. Let me check on you. Let me know how you're doing. I'm going to talk to y'all later. Bye, y'all.